31, welcome to section 4.3. I'm going to start this one on my computer because we're going to use our calculators for this section right out the gate. So we're going to be fitting linear models to data, which basically means we're going to create lines based on word problems the same way we did in section 4.2. But instead of having two ordered pairs or an ordered pair and a slope given to you, you're going to have a bunch of data values, data points given to you. And we're going to use some statistics to get this linear model. So you're not actually going to calculate the slope and the y-intercept. You're going to have your calculator do it for you. And this whole process of what we're about to do, you'll hear it referred to in statistics as regression analysis. And that's what regression means in the statistics community. It means making a graph or excuse me, plotting some points, looking at the shape of those points, those data values, and then putting a, a math function on top of that or overlaying it. And I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing we're going to do is draw and interpret scatter plots. I'll show you how to make a scatter plot on your TI calculator. We're going to use that graphing calculator to find our line of best fit. And that's another phrase for linear model. Stats folks actually have like seven phrases for linear modeling, um, but line of best fit, linear model, regression line, those are all, put the y equals mx plus b on there. And um, we're gonna distinguish between linear and nonlinear trends, and that will be uh, especially important moving forward, because in this section, we'll start with linear modeling, but in later sections, we're gonna do exponential, we're gonna do quadratic, we're gonna do logarithmic, we're gonna do logistic, so you'll have a bunch of different regression models that you can build on your TI-8384 calculator. And then with those models, we're going to make predictions because that's ultimately what regression analysis is in statistics, is taking past data, slapping a model onto it, right, overlaying that model, and then trying to predict into the future. And we're going to do that with this example that we have here. But let, let's talk about a scatter plot first. All right, so a scatter plot is a graph of plotted points that may show the relationship between two sets of data. All right, so I'm gonna show you how you can make graphs like this on your graphing calculator. Those are called scatter plots and your, your calculator can do that. Now, I, I think you can see that I could overlay a math function on this, specifically a line. You can see that there's this line as I trace with my mouse, right? This line that could overlay on that data. And there will be a line of best fit. Because I could put a line over here, but it doesn't really fit the data. And I could put a line over here, or I could have a line come this way. But you can see there is a line of best fit that can overlay that data that could become our linear model. And this would be a negative linear relationship. This second scatter plot would be a positive linear relationship, only because when we plot the data, it looks like a line with a positive slope. And this one here, I can't really make anything out, right? It doesn't really look like a line, doesn't look like a parabola. When we get to later functions, it doesn't look rational, it doesn't look radical, it doesn't look like the absolute value function, doesn't look exponential. It just kind of looks like a mess, right? This is what we would just call a nonlinear relationship or potentially just no relationship. All right, so with that, let's, let's talk about our, our question in example one, or let's read our exa uh, question in example one, and then I want to show you how to make a scatter plot. Now, like with everything, when you're reading this, try and think of what are my variables? What's x? What's y? Right? And was I given a slope, ordered pairs, sum of each, that kind of thing? Those are always great questions to ask yourself. So here we go. Let me scooch this up. All right, so the U.S. Census tracks the percentage of persons 25 years or older who are college graduates. The data for several years is given below, determined whether the the trend appears linear. So I can actually see my two variables here. They, they wrote them for me, year and percent graduates. All right, so if I wanted to interpret an ordered pair, let's, like, let's take a look at this first one, 1998 and 24.4. So in the year 1998, the percentage of people who were 25 years or older who were college graduates was about 24.4%. All right, oops, and I keep moving this up and down, sorry. You can see in 2000, the percentage of people who were 25 years or older who had graduated from college rose a little bit to 25.6. And if you go all the way up to the most, well, 
not the most recent year of data because they do have 2017s now, um, but at least the most recent even year data. You can see in 2016 that for folks who were 25 years or older, about 33.4% of those folks were college graduates. So let's determine whether this trend appears linear because I can see it's increasing. I see there's a positive relationship, but does that graph, does it look like a parabola, a line, something else? We're going to try and figure that out. And you could try and graph this by hand, but it's not worth it. So you're gonna to have to go on a little bit of a ride with me. There's a lot of calculator buttons and there's a setup we need to do on your calculator. So before we even get going, to make sure that all of our calculator screens look the same, you have to go into your mode. Now, all of us have a screen that looks like this. On the newer models, there's a second screen. You can see the next down here. Now, not every calculator has this next. It, it, the one, the calculator that I personally own, not the one on my computer, it doesn't have it because I have an old model. So the older models do not have this. So if you have the newer model, I need you to scroll down and we need to change two things. All right, your calculator, if you've got the newer model, comes with math print active meaning it has the black background, and I need you to change it back to classic. So we all have to go back to the old operating system so that all of our screens look the same. So most of you, if this is the first time with your calculator, you can see that math print will have the black background, but I need to activate the classic operating system. So let's go to where the blinky is on classic, and then you just hit enter. That's your basic toggling things on and off. The other thing that you have to do is you have to set your stat wizards off, oh, excuse me, stat wizards off. I, mine came, I already had mine programmed the way I wanted it. So most of you, they are on, right? So you need to take stat wizards, not diagnostics. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Stat wizards have to be off. So let's go down to stat wizards. I'm gonna hover over till it's blinking on the word off and hit enter. All right, so if you have the newer operating system, these are the two calculator tweaks you need to make under the mode menu. And now all of our calculators will look the same. We're all running on the old operating system. All right, so if you ever wanna go back to your home screen, I think of it as like the Apple button in the middle of my phone, hit second in mode. You can see if I hit the blue key, the word quits showing up. So just hit it and quit it. Ah, ah. All right, so then we're back at our home screen. And what I want us to do is I want us to get this data into our calculator so that my calculator can just graph the points for me and I don't have to do it by hand. All right, I'm going to clear my key press history, and here we go. You're beginning to take a look at statistics in this class. So there's a button that says stat. Go ahead and hit it. All right, and then we need to hit edit. We're going to edit some lists of data. So when I hit enter, now you can see I have old data in here because I use this computer calculator a lot. I'll show you how to clear it out. But for the most part, if anyone has a new calculator, these will be empty. And if they're empty, great. Then just sit tight. Till, till mine empty out. I'll show you that. But you can see I have a list one, a list two, list three. If I scroll to the right, I have L4, L5, L6. All right, some lists that I haven't used yet. I'm gonna keep, oops, I guess I can't scroll right anymore. Let me go back to L1, L2, and L3. Now I need to clear these out. This is an old problem. If you have data in your lists, here will be the two buttons you need to clear out data. All right, so go up until L1 has the black background. So I don't want you down here in the first cell. All right, I don't want, that's what L1 of one means, the first cell in L1 in this list of data. Go up to L1, so scroll up. And then it's two buttons. We're going to hit clear, and then we're going to hit enter. All right, and you see that it clears my list out. I'm gonna do the same on L2. All right, I'm gonna go up to L2, and I'm going to hit clear and then I'm going to hit enter. All right. And here's what happens sometimes. So it's always clear enter to get rid of data in a list, but sometimes we, we hit delete on accident because you think delete is what you want to do. So let me just scroll this over so you can see what's about to happen. If I hit delete instead of clear enter, do you see that L3 just goes away, right? L3 is not cleared out, it is deleted. And then folks are like, oh no, I lost a list. Well, you can fix it. If you see right over the delete key is the word INS, that stands for insert, so I can insert it back in. If I wanna reclaim my L3, now my calculator's asking me to name it. And I, I doubt you've noticed this before, but let me show you. Here's L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, L6. You can see them 
over the keys one, two, three, four, five, six, but they're in blue. So I need to hit the second key. So I will hit second L3 and then I'll hit enter. And then your calculator, because it's got a little bit of memory, it even remembers that. So let me hit clear and enter here. All right. All right, here comes the fun. This is data entry. All right, if you've ever heard, heard of a job called data entry, this is what it is. So we're going to put all of our X variables, our year data, into L1. And we're going to put all of our Y values, the percent graduates, into L2. And data entry is quite literally, you just enter a number and hit enter, right? Number, enter, number, enter. And we're going to repeat until all of our data are entered. So here we go. Let me start typing this in and then give me a moment. Oops. Oops, something's wrong there. Oops, 2014. Okay, once I've done L1, I'm gonna hit the right arrow key and go into the first cell in L2, and it's data entry time. Okay, so whenever I get to the end of doing some data entry, it's a good thing to check that the number of observations in L1 is the same as the number of observations in L2. And right now you can see I have 10 in each. That's what the, the number in the parentheses represents. This is the 10th entry in the L2 list. And 2016 is the 10th entry in the L1 list. And they need to have the same number of data values. If you don't, you're going to see an error pop up. And I, I can talk about that error later, um, but I, I want to do this the right way first and then show you some common errors that pop up. All right, I'm going to clear my key press history again because it's just a mess. All right, so here we go. Whenever you want to make your scatter plot, one of these things up here, because I, I do want to see, is my, is my data linear or not? Go home, right? Home is second and mode, so quit out of that screen. And a lot of these are going to be two button commands. So to go home, second in mode, right? To clear out a list, clear and then enter. All right, to make a scatter plot, it's two buttons, second and y equals. And if you look at the blue words over y equals, you see it says stat plots, and that's what we want to do. And right now for this calculator, I can see that all three of my plots are off, and you're, you're able to make three plots at a time. Typically in here, we'll make one plot, maybe two plots at a time, but your calculator has the ability to graph three stat plots at a time in the same way that it has the ability to graph 10 functions at a time. And just looking at my calculator, I'm, I'm going to clear this out while I'm here so that I'm not seeing any of that. Okay, so let me go back into my stat plot, second and y equals. Let's um, edit out the first one, so I'll hit enter. Now, I'd like to turn it on. You can see right now that off has the black background, so I will hit enter and activate on. You have six types of stat plots you can make in your calculator. If you come take Math 43 with me, I'll show you how to do all six, but we're just going to do the first one here. So hit the down arrow key, and again, to activate this, hit enter. All right. And then typically, your calculator will default to the correct lists. And you can see here, I did put my X's in L1. I did put my Y's into L2. But let's say, let me just adjust this right now. Why isn't, there we go. Let's say for some reason, somebody had a one here. All right, oops, and you see my calculator not having a good time. All right, it really doesn't like the fact that I put a one there, and that's fine. So let's say you had something other than L2 there. All right, to activate L2, you're gonna hit second, and then the number two. So I'll, host, I'll go second, number two, and then hit enter. All right, and when you see that little A flashing, it means the alpha key is on. 
So if I hit alpha right now and I hit the number one, you're going to see the letter Y pop up because the alpha key's on. All right, but I would like to hit the second button and get L1 to be back here. All right, so when it comes to mark, when, I when you have your calculator make these scatter plots, they can plot the ordered pairs as little squares. Maybe you prefer these to look at like plus signs, or maybe you just want them to be an individual dot. It's the most artistic freedom you're going to have on your TI-84 calculator, so have a good time with it. Um, I'm lazy, so I just pick the defaults. All right, when you get done with that, two more buttons. Zoom, and instead of six, because we've been doing a lot of zoom sixes when we were doing the math problems, scroll down to nine. I know it's a little far to get to. You can also just hit the number nine, but I want you to see what it says. It says zoom stat. So your calculator will create a window so that the x-axis goes from 1998 to 2016, all right, and that the y-axis goes from 24.4 to 33.4. And it won't go exactly those numbers, it'll be a little bit wider of a window and a little bit longer of a window to accommodate that, those numbers. So let me hit enter, and then there we go, right? So there's my trend. If I go back to the original question, determine whether this trend appears linear, it sure does, right? That looks pretty darn close to a line. Something happened a little bit in this year. I'm not sure. We could hit trace. What year was it? It didn't quite fit. So it looks like from 2004 to 2006. And when if you look at the bump up, it, it wasn't as large as most years were, right? So the increase in those years wasn't as great as other years. But that's looking pretty linear. Now, before we get out of this question, I want to go back home. So second mode. Oops, there we go. There's my home screen. And then second y equals, I just want to show you the second stat plot. If I went into the second type of stat plot, this one that looks like a scatter plot, but maybe you can see that the, the dots are connected, I'm going to hit enter to activate it. And everything stays the same. And then two more buttons, zoom nine. All right, and then you can see I have a scatter plot with the lines connected. I just wanted you to see that option. That's not the one that I'm typically going to do because I'm actually going to overlay a linear model on top of this graph, so it's actually easier for me to see it when the dots aren't connected. I just wanted you to see the second stat plot. So let me go back into this and take it back to my original one. All right, and this is the graph. This is the scatter plot that we're dealing with coming out of here. If I was to label the x-axis, this would say year. If I was to label the y-axis, it would say percent of graduates. All right, and let's just take a look. You can see my window's going from 1996 to about 2018, right? So almost two years on either side of my low and my high. You can see my y-axis is going from, what, 23 to 35? So just a little bit under 24.4 and a little bit over 33.4. So that's what Zoom 9 will do. It'll create a window based on your data. All right, so with that, I'm just going to quickly flip back to my handwritten solutions so we can actually write out the, the answer to this. I'll see you in a bit, gang. Bye. Hey, Math31, before we leave this example behind, I just want to remind you of some key vocab terms. When you see this kind of scatter plot, we would say this was a negative relationship. And that would be because if we were to overlay a linear model, on this graph, on this scatter plot, it would look something like this ish, right? That could be our linear model, right? And it would have a negative slope, meaning as one variable increases, as the x axis, as we move left to right along the x axis, the y values move down. And on the flip of that, if you had a scatter plot that looked like this, kind of like we did in example one, not even kind of, like we did in example one, this is a positive relationship. Because if we were to overlay a linear model onto this scatter plot, and I'll do my best impression, maybe something like that, that linear model would have a positive slope. All right, so negative relationship, linear model with a negative slope. Positive relationship, linear model with a positive slope. Now this one over here, this has no relationship, or I should say this is a nonlinear relationship. So when our fourth learning outcome was to distinguish between linear and nonlinear relationships, these two are linear, 
one was positive linear, one was negative linear, and this is just straight nonlinear. I, I don't even know what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything to me. This doesn't look like a parabola, an exponential, a log. It just looks like a mess. All right, now to finish off number one, let me scooch this up just a little bit. All right, let's always make sure that we've answered the questions asked of us. So we, we have our data, right? We, we want to determine whether the trend appears linear. Now, just to remind you how you do this on your, your calculator, I know we just did it, but I have my data put into my list, cell one and L2. I'm gonna go to my stat plots. So you can see for this calculator, right, they're all off. So let me go ahead and turn this one on, activate this type, and then I'll go L1 against L2. And then it's a matter of zoom nine. So here's where we wanna hit zoom nine. And yes, that, that data definitely looks linear to me. All right, so I'm going to answer this question and say yes. The trend, or I should say the trend appears linear. All right, and if you want to be super fancy, you could say it, it looks approximately linear. It's not an exact line, but it's approximately linear. All right, so keeping that in mind, if, if I were to actually graph this, this scatter plot by hand, keep in mind you would label your x-axis with years and you would label your y-axis with percent of college graduates. And if we look at our window right now, you can see my window's going again from 96 to about 2017 and I'm making a tick mark every one unit. So you see this is going, what did we say we were starting at? 1996, so here we go. So this is 1997, 1998, 1999, so on and so forth. And for my y-axis, you can see I'm going from about 22.87 to 34.93, and I'm making a tick mark again every one unit. If you don't want all of these tick marks here, you could change your x scale to five. Let's go by fives, and then I'll go by twos here just to be different. So you can see I'm making a tick mark every five units versus every two units. All right, so you can do whatever you want, but as soon as you adjust something in your window, don't hit zoom nine. If you hit zoom nine, it'll take this all back to default. So you have to hit graph. All right, so with that, we're gonna move forward and take a look at example two. We wanna figure out how do we actually get the line to go on top of this data? How, would, how do we overlay that line? How do we overlay that linear model? All right, I'll see you in a few, gang, bye.